God. Will you turn your Bibles to John chapter 9? John chapter 9 in verse 1. John chapter 9 in verse 1. And today I want to talk to you about how to receive healing. Like we said earlier today, that today is a very special day. And why is it very special? Number one, because it's not just a service, we have the opportunity to pray for the sick. So, you know what I want to do for me today? If you have a friend, if you have a neighbor, if you have a relative, someone that is close to you that needs healing or needs a miracle in their business, will you pick up the phone at this moment and ask them to tune in to the channel in which you're watching from? Maybe it's a YouTube channel, maybe it's a television channel, maybe it's a um, radio channel maybe it's a maybe it's a social media handle will you ask them to tune into that today because the power of god is going to be significant let me tell you something in the moment there will be such an avalanche of miracles you will not even believe it john chapter 9 in verse 1 the bible says and as jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from birth so this man would have what we call a natural deformity was blind from birth and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin this man or his parent that he was born blind listen that question is based on an assumption what's the assumption the question is based on the assumption that number one something went wrong and god you know something went wrong like someone sinned and the sickness is a function of that person's sin and i want to listen and, and let me tell you something it's amazing how a lot of religion as from our perspective today it's amazing that when terrible things happen like earthquake like tsunamis people call those things the act of god and when you read the bible you understand that our god is full of love and full of kindness and they say but these are the acts of god this is god punishing people see what jesus had to say here the bible says and jesus said this in verse, verse 3 the Bible says, and Jesus answered, neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, that the, it says, neither has this man sinned, nor his parents. Of course, Jesus did not mean that this man had never sinned, or his parents had never sinned. What he was saying was this, that this sickness is not the result of the sin the man or his parents had committed. So, that is the big thing because when things happen people think that when things go wrong in my life it's because god is not um, god is unhappy with me so god is punishing me if that is your theology you are going to open yourself to satan listen to what jesus christ said the bible says and jesus said this but the works let me let me backtrack a little and jesus answered and said neither had this man seen nor his parents but that the works of god should be made manifest in him that is so powerful why is that so powerful jesus christ said look when you see this man without eyes that is blind that is not the work of god because people will carry him as a newborn baby and say this is how god made him but jesus christ said hey that is not that blindness is not the work of god now that i'm going to open his eyes i want you to see the work of god the blindness is not the work of god but the restoration of a sight is the work of god you know the reason i'm saying so sometimes when a child is born with autism people are quick to say that's the work of god that that's how god made him you know and listen to me that's not how god god did not make anybody in a defective way sometimes it's human fault it's human error sometimes it's the work of demons but we know something here and what do we know the bible says that the bible says that that the work of god should be made perfect what is the work of god long and short of the story the man's eye cleared open he began to see everybody was screaming and shouting he was born never seen before the reason i'm saying this to you today says you might have a condition that's existed since birth it could be an asthma it could be a sickle cell condition it could be a, a fallopian tool problem you might have a condition that doctor says is impossible as a matter of fact you might be sitting watching me in the hospital and you are in an intensive care unit you are right there and they say you have COVID-19 and you think it's over I have good news for you with God all things are possible men can say something is impossible men can say something is incurable but with our God our God is bigger than doctors our body is bigger than vaccines and with our God all things are 
impossible. This man had never ever seen in his life. Imagine what happened to him and his parents. All of a sudden, Jesus ministered to him and his eyes popped open. For the first time, he saw blue. He said, what is this color? Because he never understood what colors were. He had never seen the beauty of flowers. But that's what our God can do. Never put to the background the power of our God. Our God with the blast of his nostril opened up the Red Sea. Our God through his power brought the dead back to life. And whatever you're going through today, maybe you've struggled with fertility. You've not been able to have a child. You've gone from IVF and from doctor to doctor. Don't worry. There is someone called the great physician. He's called the great physician because he's a physician that treats other physicians. And he's going to reach out to you today and you're going to get pregnant and we're going to celebrate very soon in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is what I want to say to you here. God always wants to heal. That's God's dream. So the first point is this. God always wants to heal. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says in a very powerful way. The Bible says in Acts 10 verse 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil. Take note of what it said. He says he went about doing good. What is good? Healing the sick. What is good? Casting out devils. What is good? Healing the sick. God is in the business of always doing good. What is good to God? Healing the sick. I don't know where you are right now but God wants to heal you. I don't know what you're struggling right now, but God wants to heal you. You know, in Luke chapter 22, that I wanted to turn in there, in Luke 22 verse 50, let me show you how much God is willing to heal. Because some of you, see, a lot of people know that God has the power to heal. But a lot of people do, are not sure if God is willing to heal me. It's like I can check in my pocket right now and I have, and I have a hundred thousand. And you need 5,000. You know, I have the capacity to give you 5,000. But you're not sure if I'm willing to give you 5,000. Let's look at what the willingness of God looks like. Look to the 22. And, and this is a very huge story to me. This is one of the, maybe one of the most striking stories of healing in the Bible to me. Jesus had been assaulted, harassed, arrested. And they were going to take him to kill him. And they knew that. And one of Azalea's servants took the sword and one of the people that attacked him as he was trying to maybe cut off his head, he landed and cut off his ears. And the Bible says the ears fell to the ground. And Jesus was already harassed, going to the die. And Jesus Christ paused for a minute. The guy that cut his ears did not even ask for a healing. All he knew was he was bleeding and was in pain. Jesus harassed, assault, you know, arrested on his way to dying. He stopped for a minute. And say, so that you know the kind of God that you're serving. He picked up the ear that's cut off to the ground and slapped it back into the air. And bam! The ear stayed together. Even in his most vulnerable state, he was willing to heal the sick. The question is this why won't he heal you? Why won't he heal your child? Why won't he give you a baby? Why will he allow COVID 19 to kill you? Why will he allow tuberculosis to kill you? Why will he allow you to go through life not having a child? Why will he allow that allergy and that asthma to destroy you? Today, the healing power of the Holy Spirit is going to come into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's read the story. Luke chapter 22, verse 15. The Bible says this, And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ears. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. He says, It's okay. And it touched the ear, and he healed him. Do you believe that? See the heart of Jesus. This man did not even ask for healing. Some of you are like that. You're like, Lord, I've been asking to heal me. Maybe the thing is that you think you have to do something to get it. So the first point is this. God is willing to heal. God has the power to heal. Jesus is willing to heal. Did you notice that throughout the Bible, Jesus never said no to healing somebody? And what do we know? What we know is this. Jesus is the expression of the character of the Father. The second thing I want to know about healing is this. Healing is a function of God's mercy. Healing is what? It's a function of God's mercy. In Luke 18 verse 38, a blind man came to Jesus. He said that, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Why am I saying this to you? That healing is a function of God's mercy. This is so powerful. This is such a powerful concept. The reason why is this. Hey, pay attention. The reason why most people are not healed is this. They think they have to do something to be healed. Meanwhile, true Bible healing, it's a gift and it's a function of God's mercy. 
This man was blind. He said, I can't say heal me for this and that. He says, son of David, have mercy on me. What is mercy? What is mercy? And how is mercy different from, different from grace? Grace is God giving you something that you do not deserve. Grace says, God reaches as Christ's expense. You didn't deserve salvation. God gave that to you. It's a free gift. What is mercy? Mercy is this. It's not God giving you something you don't deserve. God changing what you deserve into something else. How do I mean? Grace is this. I look at you and say, I just love you. Take this $10 million. That's grace. I just showed you grace. What is mercy? Mercy is that you stole my money. And when you stole my money, I should have jailed you because of fraud. You came to me. And instead of me sending to seven years imprisonment in a very terrible prison, I look at you. And what do I say to you? I say, listen to me. Take this extra money and go and start a business. What does that mean? Mercy is that I should have gone to prison, but you'd rather give me something else that would be a blessing to me than, than me suffering. That's mercy. Mercy is that I should receive judgment, but you should be mercy. Mercy is that I should receive curses, but you should be mercy. So this man says, have mercy on me. Maybe the sickness, maybe the trouble your marriage is going through is something you cost. The mercy of God can change things. You, you're meant to get a divorce. You should not have a child by the, what you've done. You should, you should crumble financially by, the, by the, all the evil you've done in business. But God's mercy is strong. And today, lift up your hands anywhere you are and say, Lord, I ask you for your mercy based on what Christ has done. I'm a benefactor of your mercy based on what Christ has done. See what Paul, in, Paul said in Philippians chapter 2. This is very powerful. Philippians chapter 2. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Philippians chapter 2. Hey, hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2 in verse 7. See what Paul said here. Verse 27 rather. Paul said this. He was talking about somebody else. He says, For indeed he was sick near unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him also, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. You know, mercy is so powerful that the mercy that God extends to you can reach somebody else. That is so powerful. No wonder when the woman that had the child came to Jesus Christ, he said, Jesus, have mercy on me. He said, my daughter is sick. The daughter did not come to Jesus, but because of the faith of the mother, the healing power of God reached the daughter. That is what the mercy of God does. He doesn't only do it for you. He reaches somebody else that you are connected to. The mercy of God reaches somebody else that you are connected to. Just for you to know this. Healing is not based on qualifications, not based on what you do. Healing is not a function of what I do or what I didn't do. Healing is a function of God's mercy. Healing can be stopped by sin. Yeah? Because it's a messy thing. Someone say, Pastor, you, you know, and this is why some people are not healed. They have what I call sin consciousness. This is why some people are not healed. They have sin consciousness. They say, with all I've done, I know God cannot heal me. If, even last night, I was a horrible person last night. God cannot heal me. And the thing is this. God is never healing you based on you. God is healing you based on His mercy and grace in the person of Jesus Christ. Healing is based on God's mercy. If you would choose to just let go of the condemnation and say, Lord, I receive your grace, you'll be surprised how easily healing will flow into your spirit. Even now. Even now, God is touching you. God is touching you. Pains are leaving bodies even right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Aches are leaving bodies right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you have suffered for such a long time, but you think that God is one that is punishing you. God says, it's not me. You know, let me just slide down and, you know, sh just keep teaching. The other thing you have to know is that healing is, healing is from God and sickness is from the devil. So I say, how do you know that? Because the Bible says in the book of Matthew, it says, a kingdom divided against the soul, chapter 12, will fall. Jesus cannot be healing and God making sick. They are working against each other. If they're on the same team, then healing is from God. You know what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians? It says God is not the author of confusion. That means God is not the author, the one rooting out and, and you know, he's the one pulling down. No, that's not how it works. If Jesus is healing the sick, God is not making people sick. No matter what you think about this season, God is not the one making people sick. 
What God is doing is this. He's healing people. He didn't say, I'm the Lord that caused you to, to, to be sick. No. He said, my name is Jehovah Rohika or Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healed thee. That's what he said. I am the Lord that healed thee. So healing is not from the healing is from God and sickness from the devil. The reason why is every time you think that sickness is from God, you will never be able to have faith to believe God for healing. And let me say this to you quickly. I'll read from Acts chapter 3. Healing is received by faith. Every of God's gifts, salvation, is received by faith. That's what Hebrews 2:8 says to us. The Holy Spirit received by faith. Speaking in tongues, received by faith. What about healing? Received by faith. Someone says, okay, what does that mean? That's technical because I, I want to receive today. How do I receive healing in a technical way? Receive by faith. What does receive by faith means? It means this, if we receive by faith, we are not receiving by feelings. So, if someone gives me an iPhone, when they give me the phone, when I touch, oh, thank you because I can see it. That's feelings. What does it mean to receive by faith? Receive by faith to believe and accept what God says. Watch this now. When you receive by faith, then it shows up in the physical. Watch this now. Someone that is a drunkard will receive salvation and get born again. And when he gets born again, you know, he will notice that that drunkenness is a thing of the past. Because he first received by faith deliverance and it manifested. The same thing with healing. You receive healing first. And you will see a manifestation. Most people want to say, I'm a drunk and I want to get born again. Let me, let, you know, this is what you say if you receive my feelings. Once I'm delivered from drunkenness, I will not get born again. That's wrong. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. You receive by faith. And what happens next? You will see the manifestation. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we worship your holy name. Just wave your hands and give him praise and glory. Glory. Liho, Shate, Crosse, Fratila, Mantes. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, the Lord, the Lord began to speak to me as I prayed about this service. There are certain people with pains on the back. You know, some of you are sitting on the couch right now and you're being healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's someone that the Lord spoke to me about. You have a, a leg condition. And as they're watching right now, I'm talking about you. You have been healed by the power of God. I see someone sitting on a white couch, actually. And you have been healed by the power of the Holy Spirit, even at this time, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 God is touching you. God is really touching you. I see a mother that has a sick child. I want to grab that child because God is going to touch that child today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said healing is received by faith. So healing is not received by feelings. Healing is received by faith. Faith is based on the revelation of God's word. I don't want to read a Bible story to you and I'm going to close from here. The Bible says in Acts chapter 3 verse 1, And Peter and John went together unto the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain woman, a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, this was also born with a sickness. You know why I keep saying this? That many of you have kids that are born with a sickness and for some reason you've convinced yourself that that's it. That could be it with doctors but not with God. Either it's a Down syndrome, either it's autism, either it's a blindness, either it's an allergy, either it's asthma. My God can heal. And I mean it with every, I mean it with everything in my soul. Bible says this man was born lame. The Bible says in verse three, who seen Peter and John? I told you that healing must receive by faith. Going to the temple, he asks alms, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him, says, "Look on us." And he gave it to them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, "Silver and gold I have none." But such as I have, hey my God, hallelujah. I, I love that scripture. You know why? Because what Peter have, we have today. What Peter have, I have to, as I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking the same word because we have the same Holy Spirit. We have the same power of God. We have the same prayer. We have the same name of Jesus. He says, such as I have, I give unto you. Hallelujah. You may be weak on that chair and you've not been able to move. And they say, you've been so sick of the virus. I say, such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. 
He says, such as I have, I give unto you. Right now, wherever you are, whatever is holding you down as an infirmity, that devil of infirmity is leaving you right now. I rebuke the infirmity in the name of Jesus. I command the infirmity to go. I command the dumbness to go. I command the virus to go. I command the chest condition to be healed. I command the arthritis to go. I command that, that child I seek be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the blindness to go. I command the short sighted to be healed. I command the lungs to go. I come against that tumor that Linda has three tumors in her body. I come against that tumor in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Listen, as I'm praying right now, anywhere you are, miracles happening everywhere. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how far you are, there's no distance in the of the Spirit. Jesus Christ told the man, the man told Jesus, he said, speak the word only, thy servant shall be healed. You, right there, the power of God is touching you. Glory to God. Hey. The Bible says that, and Peter said in verse 6, even God I have none, but such as I have I give unto you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and work. Now, now this is what I wanted to notice. I said healing is received by faith. Do you remember that? Healing is received by faith, not by feeling. So if you say, uh, I, I'm not feeling it, I need to feel something, you'll not get healed. Uh. It says, rise up and work. What happened? The Bible says, when it says, rise up and work, you may, remember the man was paralyzed. The man still on his bed, on his chair like this. He didn't move because nothing changed. All of a sudden, the Bible says that, and he, Peter, took him by the right hand he went and took him by the right hand and lifted him up the bible says and immediately his feet and ankle bones his feet and ankle bone received strength and he leaping up stood and walked and entered in there into the temple walking leaping and praising god and all the people saw him walking and praising god and they knew this was the man that sat at the, at the gates for arms. You know what I'm saying this to you? When I pray for you right now, you may feel something. I may even call your case and just go like, I'm just there. No. Healing is by faith. What do you mean? After the prayers, you're going to start waving your hands. Without feeling, I just said, Father, I thank you, I'm healed. You start thanking God for the next one minute. Thank God you are healed. And when you thank God you are healed, what do you do? How do you know you're healed? You begin to do what you could not do before. Look at, look at this man. This man, Peter prayed for him, just went that way. Imagine if Peter had not paid more attention to pull him up. He might have never gotten up. Meanwhile, he was healed. I'm saying so because you could be healed in your house right now. And yet, you refuse to get up. You could be healed in the hospital right now. And yet, you refuse to get up. The death here could have opened. And yet, you will not know. Praise God. I say Hallelujah. So how do you receive healing? Just some instructions. In a moment, I'm going to pray for you. And when I pray for you, the first thing is this. Believe that God loves you. And he wants to touch you. The second thing is this. As we, when you believe that, I'm going to ask you to put your hands anywhere the sickness is. And if there's someone that's close to you that believes... You put your hand anywhere that they are putting their hands that the sickness is, as long as it's appropriate. So if they are putting their hands on their hand, put your hands there. If it's not a place you can touch just because of health or something else, you can just stretch forth your hands towards them. And what do we do? We're going to pray for them together. And when you put, you put your hands on yourself, ask the other person to stretch forth their hands towards you if they cannot touch you. And when I finish praying, I'm going to command the sickness to leave and it's going to go. Begin to thank God after the prayers and begin to declare, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. But the strife of just, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. And when you say that for a couple of, you know, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine times, what do you do? Begin to do what you could not do before. If you're on a wheelchair, you stand up. If you're on a spirit of bed, you, you, you call the doctor, doctor, I think I'm healed. I want to exercise my faith right now. I want to exercise my faith right now. If you're trying to have a baby, you tell your husband after the service is over, we have to go and something in the bedroom because baby has come right now. If you had a tumor, you check the tumor. Because you check it, you check your body, the tumor is gone. 
if, if your ear was couldn't hear you start speaking to the ear if your eyes couldn't see you start speaking to the child if it's your child you take that child and say walk walk help that child work glory to God I said glory to God